take a couple of good long deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel it. And if long breathing feels comfortable, keep it up. If it doesn't feel comfortable, you can change. You can make a game of it, figuring out what kind of breathing feels best for the body right now. What does your body need? The breath is like free medicine, and for the most part we just throw it away. Don't pay any attention. Look for other medicine outside. But the way you breathe has a huge impact on the body and a huge impact on the mind. So it's good to explore it. Take some time to experiment. What does short breathing do to the body? It was longer breathing, deeper breathing, more shallow breathing, heavier, light, faster, slow, mixing these things up in lots of different ways. And begin to get a sense of the impact that the breathing has on your mind and the body. And that's an important lesson, because then you can use the breath. When anger comes, when fear comes, when you're lying awake at night and can't get to sleep, you can focus on the breath. It's like you have something to play with or you have a friend to talk to. And as with any friend, when you don't know the friend very well, you just sit there and you have no idea what to say. The other friend doesn't know what to say. But after all, you start asking questions, and the other person starts answering. If you don't answer, ask the questions, there are no answers. So you can ask questions about the breath. What kind of breathing would be good for your lungs? What kind of breathing would be good for your intestines? How about the tension in your shoulders or a pain in your back? What kind of breathing is good for that? Because as you get to know the breath, you realize it's not just air coming in and out of the lungs. It's a whole flow of energy in the body. And for the most part, we ignore it. And then we miss out on the, the benefits that can come from paying attention to these things. So take a while to sensitize yourself to this. In the beginning, it seems like nothing is happening, and it's very easy to get bored. But again, ask questions. It's like listening to a talk. If the person giving the talk doesn't know what people listening are interested in, he just kind of talks away and whatever strikes his fancy. But if you start asking questions, then you find that he's got things to say about the specific issues you've got. I myself found the breath started getting interesting when I began to relate the whole idea of the breath energy to some long-term pains in the body. I jumped out of a barn one time when I was a kid and landed on a nail, and there was always a bit of tension in my right foot. And when I began to realize that the the breath energy in the legs could be used to relieve that tension. I learned that it could start dealing with other issues in the body, and when from the body you start working into the mind. When you're feeling ill at ease, well, how are you breathing? When you're feeling that someone else is invading your space, to what extent is their breath energy invading your body? To what extent can you prevent that by filling the breath? throughout the body, and keeping that sense that this is your place, you're inhabiting your body. There are lots of things you can do with the breath if you ask the right questions. Otherwise, it's just in, out, in, out, and nothing seems to be happening, and it gets boring pretty quickly. But if you use it as a foundation, you find that it gives the mind a stable place to stay, so you can stay here with a sense of well-being. And then you can watch the mind. The, the movements of the mind are a lot more interesting than the movements of the breath. And again, these are things we tend to ignore. When a thought tells us this is right or that's wrong, we tend to go running out, looking at what's right and what's wrong. And don't stop and question, well, how did that thought come into the mind? Where is it coming from? Is it right? How did that thought develop? 
This is not just an abstract question, because these are the thoughts that, are going to, that can take over very easily. You find this particularly as you get. You start facing illness or old age. Your mind can really run rampant. The things that the body used to be able to do, it can't do anymore. Where are you going to find any refuge or protection if not in your own mind? But if your mind is thinking all kinds of crazy thoughts, you can't really depend on that either. So you want to be able to look into the mind and see when a thought forms, how does it form? Can you trust it? What kind of impulse is it coming from? Something is going to be good for you or something is going to be bad? Or is it going to be good for somebody else or bad for somebody else? Because what comes through your mind is not just your own business. It has an impact on what you do and say and think, and that's going to have an impact on other people. When I was in Thailand, I was looking after John Fuang when he was sick. And even though the illnesses he suffered as he got older were pretty severe, his mind always seemed very steady. And even though the body was causing all kinds of pains, his mind was not paining him, not causing any suffering. I took that as a lesson. A couple of years later I came back. My father was sick and I was looking after him for a bit. And most of his suffering was coming from his mind. His illness wasn't nearly as bad as a John Furrung's, but he suffered a lot more. It was then that I realized that you know, the training of the mind really is important. It really does make a difference. So the time you spent meditating, even though in the beginning it doesn't seem like nothing much is happening, it's like making scrambled eggs. You turn the heat on really low and you stir and stir and stir, and for a long time it seems like nothing is happening. But then gradually the eggs begin to coagulate. If you turn up the heat too high and try to get results really fast, what you get is rubber. If you're really nice, soft, scrambled eggs, you have to keep it over very low heat and be very, very patient. So take some time to settle down. If the mind says that this is boring, just see that as a thought that's coming through and it can go right through and go away. You don't have to believe it. After all, if your own mind is boring, where are you going to find anything interesting in the world? Because the mind is what's shaping your experience of everything else, and you want to make sure it's shaping things rightly. It's like a filter. You want to know, what is it filtering out? What is it allowing to come through? Is it filtering out the right things, or is it filtering out the things that would be actually beneficial and letting through the things that are not? So when you stay with the breath, you're in the present moment. You gain a sense of how to stay with the body in the present moment in a way that feels good and is actually good for the body. And because you're in the present moment, you get to see the movements of the mind. Even though the mind may be thinking about the past or thinking about the future, you see the process in the present moment. It's like visiting a new studio. You watch the news on the TV and you find that you tend to believe what they have to say. But then when you go and watch how the news gets filtered as it goes from the morning up through the afternoon and finally comes out in the evening, it gives you a very different perspective on what's being said. You see the process and you're less inclined to believe the outcome. This is a very useful skill to have when your mind is telling you all kinds of things that could make you suffer, but you realize, oh, the process of leading to those thoughts that would induce suffering is not all that reliable. So why would you allow yourself to suffer from things that you can't trust? Why do you believe them? Watching the processes allows you to see which thoughts are trustworthy, which ones are not. And you find that the ones that really are trustworthy are the ones that are not going to cause you to suffer. The ones that point out that even though there may be problems in the body, the mind can still be okay.
that's an important lesson to learn. So if you sit with the breath for a while, it's not that nothing's going to happen, it's just that things are gradually coagulating, coming together. And if you take the time and watch and ask questions, you find that your sensitivity develops. And it's a useful sensitivity. So you can sort through the processes of your own mind. And that's one of the most useful things you can learn.